Hi everybody. Um, in this tutorial, we're going to talk about some successful tips to help you merge images together when creating uh, a new work of art. I'm going to take these two images and merge them together using some co color overlays and learning how to cut things out a little more successfully. So the first steps is I'm just going to open up uh, my two images I want to use in separate files on Photoshop. And now I'm going to teach you about the quick mask tool which can help you tidy up some uh, otherwise difficult areas to cut out. Always make sure the lock um, image is off of your layer so you can use it properly. Select your quick selection tool and you're gonna, I'm going to want to eliminate the sky around this uh, castle so I use the quick selection tool to try to draw around there but there's some areas it missed. Okay, um, I can hold the option key down uh, to show a negative symbol on my uh, selection tool and I can try to kind of work out my selection a little better and it can work out in several areas. But if I'm having some difficulty getting into other areas because Photoshop may not recognize uh, the space, what we're going to do is utilize the quick mask tool. So in a second I'll press the letter Q on my keyboard and all of a sudden it turns red. The area that I want to preserve is in red. And if I select my brush tool to black, I can use the brush just like I did in layer mask, but anything I cover in red is gonna get saved for me for my cutout. So I can fine tune that. And if I press the Q again, I can see that my selection has improved and when I so I can cycle back between pressing the letter Q to see how my mask is looking in my selection. So I'm going to go through here. Um, and again, if I switch my brush to white, it means I'm going to erase areas out that I don't want selected. So for example, right here, I don't want this sky selected. So with the, with the white brush, I'm actually eliminating that from the original selection. Uh, I'm going to move between the white and the black brush now and I'm going to erase away what I don't want and also preserve what I do. So again, I'm just improving my selection by doing some tighter uh, selecting by hand drawing it out with my mouse, keeping all those flags. Uh, when I'm ready to go, uh, when I want to get off the quick mask, I just finally press Q again and there's my improved selection. I can now hit delete and delete my sky. Um, with the selection enabled, I can just do um, press edit, copy, and then switch to my other file and paste my image on. I do notice that uh, there's like the website title there uh, on this cutout, which I don't like. So I'm gonna go back to uh, the castle. I'll hit the crop tool and cut that a little higher so that's not there anymore. Uh, quick copy and paste and I'll put that on. So there's my uh, selection really clean. Um, again, hit that lock button off if any layer is locked. And what I'm going to do is just play with adjustments now. How big I want it to be, where do I want it located on my, in my space. Uh, there's a lot of things I can do here. Make it larger, smaller, warp it, stretch the image. Um, I'm pretty happy with it here. I'm going to embed it in the clouds. Um, what I also want to do is uh, I'm going to take the eyedropper tool now and I'm going to select the color from the sky that I want to tint my castle with. So I want to use a blue. So with the eyedropper I click somewhere on the sky and you'll see that the color changes. Um, and then what I'm going to do uh, with this, it's called a color overlay, I'm going to select the castle, hit a blending option called solid color there, click OK, and I created a new layer. There's a blending mode, and if I go through all these blending modes, you'll see all these weird things happen, but hue and color are two choices that are gonna help change my castle's color to that blue sky color I picked. Um, with that, I can always change my color to different hues, you can see, for different tints of the overall image, but I wanna keep that blue. If I click the Yes button, I can play with the saturation level of it, how much blue I want in it. And then what I can also do is play with um, the intensity of colors too by hitting the brightness and all that. So when I'm happy with that, I can also use the Fill and Opacity feature here to 
show how much blue I really want in it and I can pull some away. When I'm happy with that, because I'm, um, I'm going to now create a layer mask on my castle layer. And just like I've done with the past with my layer masks, I'm gonna play with which brush I wanna use. Since it's clouds, I want it to be soft and not a hard brush. And I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna to start to embed my, um, uh, my, my image into the clouds. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the, my um, opacity of my brush down to about 20% or so, maybe a little higher. Um, and I'm gonna to start to softly erase with my layer mask to make the clouds overlap. Now, this again is uh, for what I want to do in my image. Um, you, you can create whatever you want in yours. Oops, just kind of went to the wrong layer there. So I'm going to kind of go back and forth here, see what part of the castle I want to put behind clouds, which part I want sticking out in front. And since I'm using soft opacities here, I can make it look like it's softly set in. Um, this is up to the artist. Um, I liked the co color overlay here because I wanted to tint the castle uh, with the color atmospherically of the sky so it felt like it was more in the background. I felt like the colors were too bold in the castle and if I really did see it floating in the sky it would be tinted with the sky color. That's what happens to things in the background in space. And again this is what I can do. I can kind of refine my space um, if I can't move an image, sometimes I shut an image off that's like having trouble, you see. I shut off the uh, color layer to help me move my castle, but I just wanted to show you how I refine that. I can play with my opacity, opacity slider to see how much color I really want in the castle, how much of that blue I really want in, a, in reposition. Uh, and this is a great way to um, help images really work together better. Uh, overall and um, really enhance um, the believability of the illusion you're trying to create. Here I'm playing with not just with tints but also with the transparency of my image and so on. So this is your playground. Um, this is where this is where you can really fine-tune your work as you go. I'm also going to play with a little bit of blur. So I went to the filter and I went, to, I picked a, a blur tool. Uh, and you can see if I bring the pixels out a lot, it completely blurs it. It has a little preview there. Um, and I'm just kind of trying to see, do I want to blur it a little bit? Um, is my image too sharp and I want it to soften it a little? Uh, you can play with several different types of filter tools on this. I wanted to just show you how uh, the blur feature uh, could possibly work for you, especially in a background piece. I like to always name my layers as much as possible so I can keep myself organized. Uh, I think that's the best way to go, uh, especially as you start getting multiple layers uh, made up. Good luck, everybody.